It's, that's the original poster right there. Oh, man. Yeah, look, Montgomery Ward. Yeah, that's So this is already my favorite thing about this toy show. Look up here. It's like creepy Santa Central. <laughs> I love it, no. But I love it. So today I'm doing some shopping at the St. Louis Vintage Toy and Ad Show and the Christmas season is upon us. Feeling that holiday spirit. I'm ready to do some hunting, and what better way to kick things off than walking in through those doors and seeing this amazing table filled with vintage Christmas decorations, or as my wife likes to call them, creepy Santas. <laughs> but I am a sucker for vintage Christmas, and this is really setting the mood for what I hope is gonna be an amazing day of hunting. Oh, look at this, this one right here. Uh, that's what I would point it out. I was like, that, look at that one. That's incredible. He's standing on the house. Do we need to add a new one to our, our <laughs> Santa collection this year? Sweet. It's pretty sweet. What? That's what was, so that's kind of our thing. Like, I love vin like old Santa stuff like this, but that's what she always calls them, creepy Santas. And so it's just kind of become a thing. Now we look for creepy Santas. Like, it's fun. We like it. But I, I love them. <laughs> I love it. The Christmas vibes, man. I am really ready to find some nostalgia. So let's move on and see what awaits us. I like these a lot. I remember this is an old uh, McDonald's Happy Meal toys. Yeah, it's a really cool. I am Superman. Oh, Metropolis, Illinois. How about that? We've been there. We've been there. That's a wild Superman. There's a superpower Superman. Would you pick? <gasps> you picked Groot? Oh. Oh, cool. That's Thor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's Wheeler. And Captain Planet. It's pretty cool. There's like a whole bag of it, like the I old little people. I love this adventure people kayak too. That's cool. These these are from these are the Fisher Price Zoo from the zoo. So I had the big zoo play set when I was a kid, and these are the these are the animals that went with the zoo play set. So that's cool, they like instantly stand out to me because I had these. These are really cool. But this guy right here. It's amazing. Wow, that's cool. Outer Limits game. Some expensive board games. That's cool. That would be one. Like the Christmas comics they have here. Like to see the Alf the holiday Alf. special. Yeah. You'd have to sell it That's up. actually pretty cool. I actually really like that. It's like the rifleman. No, it's not the rifle. Yeah. yeah. Fist of Conchu, number one. Just to look on his face, it's just a negotiable on some of the prices, too. So okay. That's awesome. <laughs> got a dollar box here. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, cool. Some of the old Disney comics, Christina. These are cool. Look at that, Spencer. I love these. I like shiny comics. 
Featuring all new stories of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Wow. I wonder what the price is on that. Oh, oh I've got this issue. Got that one already. I just bought that one not too long ago. Yeah, it's the only ROM book in there. Dang it. <laughs> what the price on this one? Where was this one? In here. Yeah. Um, I'd probably do five. Five on this one? Yeah. All right. I'm going to grab both of these, cool. actually. Yeah. Ooh! All right. So we're going to start things off by picking up a few vintage comic books. These are some really fun looking titles, and they really jumped out at me, and I think this is a really fun first purchase. But... Things are just getting started because right after I left this table, I stumbled upon my friend Dan's table and he has got some really incredible things that are right up my alley. That's, that's the original poster right there. I don't have any of the actual like originals of like this type of poster. Yeah. They, there's like reprints and stuff out there, but. So cool. I love that artwork so much. It's nice and bright and vibrant. Mm, it's so, so cool. Look at that. Here you go, Spencer. Here's uh, He Man, right? And there's Prince Adam. What? what? <laughs> he Man's also right there. Also, He Man's right there. Dude, the bad guys are definitely going to lose when there's two He Man's and a Prince Adam on the good side. <laughs> That's because this, this was art specifically designed to promote the action figures. So they just list out like all the current figures at the time but i love it it's so so iconic it's an iconic piece all right the vintage motu poster is amazing and it is something that i'd love to pick up from my own collection but as i'm looking at it dan calls over to me and says hey did you see that table over there i brought a whole stack of vintage store christmas catalogs I love vintage Christmas catalogs. You know what I'm talking about, right? If you're around my age, you probably remember the Sears catalog, the Montgomery Ward, the JCPenney, any of those department store catalogs that would come around Christmas time. Oh, I have got to check these out. Oh, man. Yeah, look, Montgomery Ward. Gosh, this is the year I was born. Another wish book. 1974. Okay, sounds great, man. I'm gonna peek into 1990. I'm just curious what. Yeah, because like we got video games in 90. Twister. Let's see. I'm gonna get kind of like. Uh, this is like the baby stuff. Man, I just remember flipping through these every year at Christmas, how exciting this was. Oh, wow. There you go, check that out. Barbie. Yes! I have this sleeping bag now. Oh, the Ghostbusters tent, yeah. Look at Dick Tracy. Oh, yeah. Is this the Mario one? That's the Mario pinball machine. I always see this at toy shows now. It's a very expensive thing now. Oh, I bet. And then this Ghostbusters one seems very familiar to me. Oh, there's that little Ninja Turtle shooting gallery. I've, I've seen that at a couple toy stores. That thing is really cool. I don't think I've ever heard about that. Ninja Turtle. Okay, this is pretty incredible. This is pretty incredible. What other, I might, I might, yes, yeah, because I've been wanting to get more of this kind of stuff. Um, I want to see what else, what other years do we have over here? Seven. Look. Uh, the Care Bear ones, the Cabbage Patch ones. This would have been like the crazy Cabbage Patch year. Yeah. Oh, this, here we go. High fashion. That's, that's why I wanted to look at this one. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. The clock. What's the one in the corner? The very bottom. Done here? Yeah. It's a pinball machine. This is 82. 
And they already had Snake Mountain in here. That is shocking. So did it start in the early 80s? And then, and then yes, it would have. These Christmas catalogs hold such a special place of nostalgia for me. I fondly remember getting these big, hefty books every single year around the holidays, flipping through each of the pages, excitedly seeing what toys are in there, taking a pen and marking the things that I wanted for Christmas. You gotta realize that when we were kids, sometimes flipping through books like this is how we were discovering toys for the first time. Of course, we had TV commercials and we would walk down the aisles at places like Toys R Us or KB, but these catalogs were something special. They had this real magical way of laying out all of these amazing toys and making them look so enticing. It was exciting. So here's my dilemma. Do I want 90 with all the Ninja Turtle stuff or 82 with all the He-Man stuff? I feel like I'm leaning towards the He-Man stuff, to be perfectly honest. I definitely scooped up a few of these catalogs, and I feel really, really good about it. See, to me, these toy catalogs are just as much a part of toy history as so much of this other stuff that we get in our collections today. I think it's a really great time capsule of a time gone by, and I love seeing the way that these items were solicited in some of these magazines. So I'm really happy to pick up a few books representing some of my favorite years and toys. So I feel great. I already got some really cool stuff today, but here's the crazy thing. I haven't even left the first aisle of this toy show yet. So we gotta see what else is out there still. Yeah, that, it's just the package. Creepy bods. Headless bodies for display with your mad balls. That is really cool. It's a shame that that's just an empty blister. I had no idea that was a thing. So they made, look, they made, it's empty, but they made empty bodies to put mad balls on top of. This is really cool, the creepy bods. Honestly, I had no idea that these existed, but essentially they were just bodies that were designed to hold your mad balls. I really wish that that was actually here and it wasn't just the packaging, but after doing a little research after the show, these seem to be pretty rare. So I guess just that package alone could be desirable for someone. It's really cool. I always love learning about new things. Of this carded Black Star Palace Guard is sweet. The artwork on that packaging. Men in Black Zap'em Van. There's a Grayskull Tower for a vintage Eternia. $80. I have no idea what this is, but it's pretty cool. They're so shiny. <laughs> oh, wow, that's cool. Giant Darkwing Duck is amazing. Wampa. Here's a boxed version of that McDonald's restaurant playset that I just bought like earlier in the year. So these are the figures that I need. I don't have the figures for it because I just bought the playset by itself, but rubble, rubble. I just need the ship. This is awesome. And it's got a little pencil. Come on. That is so cool. That's beautiful. All right, this little vintage Ninja Turtles notebook, that's cool. And it's definitely got me interested in digging in the rest of this bin to see if there's any other treasures in there because it might be a good idea to try to bundle some things together. And maybe I can bring home this little notebook. Spacecraft. Spacecraft. I like they just wrote spacecraft. <laughs> I kind of love that it's got some kids writing in here. That's amazing. Mighty Max. 
Yeah, there's no minifigs in it. It's still cool. Here's a torso of an Infaceables. There's a spider. Ooh. Well, we got one. Spider-Man. Bingo! There it is. Shogun Michelangelo. That is a score in the dig bin. He's not a super rare figure, but he's not a common figure either. So I'm definitely interested in grabbing him, and now I have no excuse not to just bundle together some of those other cool things I found here and see if I can get a good deal for the batch of them. Look at the old uh, role, role play. I want to buy it. Yeah, Ninja Turtle. Here's an Earthworm Jim. Small soldiers. Oh, here's another one. Here's another. Uh, here's Donnie's. This is kind of cool. Awesome. So that that worked out great. Dealer was awesome. Gave me a great deal. Bundled together some really fun stuff. And that's one of those things that I would always tell you guys is a good idea. If you're going out hunting, don't skip past those dig bins. If you are in the mood to do a little bit of searching, you can find some cool stuff in these dig bins sometimes. And even if it's just little things like that Ninja Turtles notebook or the weird little Ninja Turtles knee pads and elbow pads, piecing things together and creating a bundle deal is always a good idea for picking up some of those smaller merchandise items. It's an electronic helmet. It's got on-off LED lights, voice changer, and voice amplifier. Have fun, talk like a transformer robot. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Oh, look at this. Game case. I wonder if I can safely get this down. <sighs> Hold your video game cartridges for Nintendo, Atari, and others. So it's totally like an unlicensed case, but they've totally got Mario on there, which is really interesting. Look at that. So this is literally so you could, like go to your friend's house with your Nintendo games and play it over at their house. Like, how cool is that? I love that. I've never seen that before. I can't remember what it is. I have that. Look at this giant Voltron pilot. Oh, all the Vi Voltron pilots. There's a Robeast in there. King Zarkon's in there. Oh, no, Bunch the of the parts. Guy. Yeah, well, I found this Paul Bearer, and this is a repaint one because this is the one after he stopped wearing the makeup, the makeup. and dyeing his hair. Yeah. And I don't have this one. I have the other one where he's got the white face and the black hair. So um, this is this is some, something I want to ask about. There's a bunch of good Voltron. Look at this. There's a bunch of uh, Prince Lotors in here. There's a variant. I think Chief is the one that told me there was a low tour variant, but look at the look at the chest here. The different color. It's well, there's only one f buckle oh. and then the skull. This one's got two buckles and then the skull. Oh. It's also painted a little different. It's so weird. There's actually a helmet in here with with Lance, which is pretty cool. The others have helmets. I don't see helmets. Oh, there are some helmets down here. So I, I thankfully have completed these right. at this point. So I don't I don't need any of those helmets. But it's kind of cool seeing these these Prince Low tours. It's a camera. It looks like French fries. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I don't even know where the button is to take a pic. Oh, it's right here on the front. So you would be like, click, click. Mm. Pepsi and Hardee's, yeah. I like the Panthor wearing Battle Cat's armor. Yep. Yeah, that's standard for Panthor, yeah. the black underneath. It's funny how the red ba Battle Cat armor makes him look different. But he's just wearing Battle Cat's armor. 
somebody really painted up that He-Man. Mm-hmm. Give him a beard. <laughs> Give him a beard. I don't know. Is that supposed to be hair on his chest? <laughs> painted his armor red. That's funny. Oh, there's Prince uh, what's it, Lightstar from uh, Skeleton Warriors. He-Man wearing Merman's armor. Yeah. That's pretty good fashion right there. I like that. I, I knew that was Merman's armor. Hey, well done. Well done. <laughs> Oh, how about Fisto with Jitsu's fist? <laughs> somebody really swapped. Liked. Somebody really liked customizing their He-Man yeah. toys. They really got some play out of them. Yeah, that's great. Oh, hey, there's a half boots. Half boots. The black belt. Yep, half boots, black belt, pink cheek Skeletor. And what does that mean? That means this is the best Skeletor you can find. Oh, that means this is the first issue, first release. They cut all these paint apps. Eventually started fully painting this. So is he a soft head too then? Well, yeah, but that's common for oh. Elmo too. It's nice. That's a good one. I don't know what they got on all of these. There's no price tags, but it's a good skelly. So this table here that we've been looking at has had a lot of really cool stuff on it. And there were a few things that I was actually kind of interested in asking about. Like that Skeletor was amazing. And I have that Skeletor, but I was still curious what the price was on it. Because this is one of those booths where there weren't any price tags on anything. Um, and I was interested in like that Paul Bearer figure that I was carrying around. And I was even kind of interested to check on some of those Prince Lotor figures so I can see if I could pick up some of the variants. Uh, but the dealer had stepped away from the table at this time. And I kind of hung around a little bit waiting, but eventually I just moved on with intent to come back. I get it. It happened happens you can't always be there sometimes you got to step away so i was a little i was a little bummed that i didn't find out about some of these things but there's still plenty of cool stuff out there so we're going to just see what else we can stumble upon here at the show these are in way better shape than than mine at home mine are really wore out much more brown yeah really wore out rawr, rawr. I actually kind of like this. I wonder what this is from. That's cool. You know, put that, put that, put that with the He-Man figure. Yeah. So you have like Battle Lion. Wow! Thirty dollars for everything. Look at that. It's like a whole play set. It's, it's Rudolph's home. Yeah. <gasps> that is cool. Two yep. elves. Yep, two elves, Santa, it, and then... Uh, Donner or Dasher? I can't remember which one, actually. That's that's embarrassing. As much as I've seen that movie, I should know which one his dad is. <laughs> okay, so this is one of those moments where I watch my footage back and I start to question why I didn't go for something like this. This lot of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer figures where it was like a bundle set, all of those together for $30. And it's all those figures and Rudolph's home his, uh, as a play set. And, you know, I love those vintage Christmas specials. I love Christmassy themed toys. It's one of those things that I'm like, I'm honestly shocked that I didn't grab that while I was there. And now that I've come home and set up my stuff for the Christmas season, I'm like, man, I should have grabbed that. But it gets worse. Because what I'm about to find next is something that I definitely regret not picking up. This is pretty cool. There's a whole bin of carded tick figures in here. Looks like it's $100 for the whole bin, which honestly feels like a really good deal. It's a lot of stuff. <coughs> Honestly, if I if I was interested in collecting this, I'd probably go for that. But I really don't think I need to add these to my collection. It's a good deal, though. I was just looking at some of the variants in here. I love it. I dig Dinosaur Neil. All in a day's work. And then look at this. Tourist tick. Sunglasses and a swimming trunks on over his costume. That's incredible. These are good. This is ridiculously tempting. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go for this, though, but that's cool. Along with his trusty sidekick, Arthur, and other 
tours of good, four tours of evil. Watch as our hero swings into El Cid and Dinosaur Neal. Whoops! Not to worry, that wall will stop him. Or maybe not. The Tick Action Figures from Bandai. So, I made a mistake, didn't I? I really did make a mistake here. I mean, like, you guys see what this is, right? So this is this is a giant tub filled with mint on card Bandai tick figures. And I didn't dig through the whole bin to see what was in there, but there were a lot of figures in there. And it was $100 for that whole bin. And let's just say, let's just speculate that it was one of every figure from that line, which I think is roughly around 20 or 21 figures. That would come to around $5 a figure. What was I thinking? Like in the moment, I was like, well, I don't really need to go for this because I'm not collecting these. And I have been really good about trying to stay focused on the things that I can, I really want to buy. And also I had just found all those Christmas catalogs and I kind of spent some money on those. But holy cow, a giant bin of mint on card tick figures and it was $100? I am kicking myself right now. This feels like a real mistake. Like I, I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. I know that I messed up. Oh man. At this point, all I can do is just show you the rest of the toy show. <laughs> hey, look, there's my favorite gremlin in the box. Still. Uh, Mohawk? Look, I love it. He's breaking out. Uh, stripe. Yeah. Stripe. All these boxed mask toys are cool. Right, is it supposed to look like he's breaking out? Or? No, I think it's just because it's old. It looks like he's breaking out. You see the old Shogun Godzilla? I love uh, that. Hey, Super that, cool. You have one? I have a smaller version of it, like a remake, not the real thing. And all this. Oh, I love that Wampa in the box. <coughs> Some of the lesions here, these definitely aren't vintage, <laughs> but they are awesome. $100 for figures and case. Okay, let's see what we got. Man at Arms. No red dots on the helmet. Fisto. Manny faces with pink tubes. Triclops. Kind of has the more normal mouth. There's like three different Triclops mouths. It's crazy. What else is in here? Ooh, Mecha Neck with more of the pinkish color armor. Cobra Khan Whiplash and a Broken Jitsu, which could be repaired. I mean, overall, not a bad bunch of figures. Plus you get a really nice looking case. It's a bunch of VHS tapes. Look, here's some Pokemon tapes. Oh, this is cool. Mighty Mouse. Bozo. Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. Oh, come on. I love old Christmas specials. This stack of board games is incredible. Polar Dare. Thirteen Dead and Drive is fantastic. Small Soldiers. Dungeon Dice, huh? Ooh. That looks cool. Spy web. I had 35 on it. This is awesome. These illuminators are so cool. I've uh I always thought it'd be cool to get a bunch of these and put them together. I just love the idea that they're just like neon glow in the dark universal monsters. 15 bucks unbuilt. What do they have here? They've got Wolfman, Phantom of the Opera. Ooh, the mummy. And Frankenstein. I think the mummy. Oh, that is cool. with a special black light offer. Oh, that's how it glows in the dark with black light. Glows in the light, you know, because it's neon. Uh, 
Oh, these are so cool. All right. The St. Louis Vintage Toy and Ad Show was really good. It was a smaller toy show, but holy cow, it was crammed with some good stuff. And I saw a lot of cool things, and I picked up a lot of cool things. And I got to give a very special shout out to my good friend Andy, who runs Andy's Toys there in St. Louis, because this was his show that he had put on. And also, it came out right about the time that the newest season of A Toy Store Near You just debuted from Nacelle. And Andy's Toys is one of the featured episodes. So I would highly recommend you guys go check that out. You can look it up here on YouTube. It's on Amazon Prime, some of the other streaming services. You'll even see me in an episode or two as a toy expert. Um, so definitely check it out. Shout out to Andy. This was a really, really fun show. I had a blast. I saw a lot of cool stuff. And now it's time for my haul, which doesn't include those tick figures. Dang it. All right, let's start with the goodies that I picked up out of that little dig bin, because I found some really fun things. So first of all, uh, I did grab this vintage Nightmare Before Christmas. This is Locke, right? From Lock, Lock Shock, and Barrel. Um, you know, he doesn't have his mask. I think he's supposed to have a mask, but still, I grabbed him to go along with the batch of stuff that I picked up here with some really cool Ninja Turtles goodness. So first of all, the uh these two pads right here the the purple donatello knee pad and the red Raphael elbow pad these come from the vintage role play sets uh which is really cool and i just thought it was so funny that there was just one of the one of each of these in there and nothing else i dug all the way through those bins looking to see if there were any other pieces of that but i still thought it'd be fun to grab those what i really loved was this little vinyl notebook i thought this was so cool you can see it's got the Mirage Studios uh, copyright on there, licensing by Surge Licensing, which you'll see on a lot of the vintage Ninja Turtles uh, merch like this. I love that image of Raphael with the pencil and the notepad, the little button snap. Uh, has got like, look at this, there's actually a tiny little Ninja Turtles branded pencil still in there, and the paper is also Ninja Turtles branded. And you can see whatever kid owned this wrote in a lot of it, there's a lot of blank pages. There's that page that just says spacecraft. <laughs> um, I love this. I thought it was so cool. Oh, look at that. Pictures. Oh, I wonder what those are supposed to be. Still, very cool stuff. I thought this was awesome. I love merchandise like this. But the obvious winner of this batch is this Shogun Michelangelo. It's the silver version. He's in really good shape. Obviously, no accessories. But I didn't have a loose Shogun Michelangelo in my collection. I didn't have a Shogun Mikey in my collection at all. So I was really happy to see this in there. And for this whole batch of stuff right here in front of you, plus the um, Fruity Pebbles Funko Pop that my son Ryder was holding, I got that for him in this batch too. I paid 15 bucks for all of this. And Shogun Mikey alone is worth more than that. So this was a really good grab. I picked up a couple of comic books right at the beginning of the show, right inside the door there. Um, I love this super-sized ALF holiday special. You know, really feeling the Christmas season right now, so I thought this would be a really fun one to grab and give a read here for the holiday season. And then this Quests for Dreams Lost really stood out to me, uh, featuring all new stories for Silent Invasion, the Troll Lords, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Really cool stuff. So I got both of these books together. I think I paid, I think I paid 10 bucks for this little set of books because I paid five bucks each. But still, um, pretty cool stuff. I'm really happy about this. Here's a find from the show that I didn't even get on camera. Funny enough, it's one of the last things that I picked up that I kind of went back and asked about on my way out because earlier on, I had come across this on a table and you can see it's a very, very faded Phantom Flyer from the Beetlejuice toy line from Kenner. The box is super faded, but I confirmed with the dealer that it had never actually been opened. The tape was cut, but everything inside was still sealed. Stickers hadn't even been put on, so all the paperwork and everything is still in the box. I opened it when I got home, and now I have this minty, beautiful version of the Phantom Flyer uh, for a toy line that I've been collecting for, which made me very, very happy. So now I've got one of the vehicles, which is fantastic. Fantastic. I got a great deal on it. I think he had a $20 price tag on it, and I paid $15, I believe, and the dealer even threw this in for the deal. 
I got this little set of vintage Masters of the Universe Puffy stickers, which are so cool. So really happy about this get right here. Oh man, and then we've got the Illuminators. These are fantastic. I've been after these for a while. You guys might even have seen me pick these up at a couple different shows. Uh, but these are both sealed in box, so I went for the Mummy and Frankenstein, both of the sealed ones that were there. The Mummy was one of the ones I wanted the most anyway. Uh, I got the pair of these for $25, which I felt like was a pretty good deal. Uh, and I am absolutely planning to open these up and build them. I'll probably save that for a project later on, but I thought it'd be really cool to have these like bright neon models of these universal monsters that would make great Halloween decorations. But my personal favorite find of the show were these vintage Christmas catalogs. I love these. I was so happy to find these and they have gotten a little pricey at this point when I run across them, but Dan, who was the dealer that had these this booth, he did give me a deal since I bought three of them, so I really appreciate that from him. And I got some really cool ones here. So I got the, the Great American Sears Wish Book from 1990. I got the Sears Wish Book from 1985. And I got the Montgomery Ward Christmas Catalog from 1982. But is it really from 1982? No, it's from 1984. I got totally tricked and you might have noticed that early on when I was looking at this, I was mentioning how weird it was that Snake Mountain was listed in here. And let me even see if I can find the page again. Yeah, right here is the Masters of the Universe page in the book. And see, when I originally saw 82, I was like, this would be a great book to get because that's the year Masters of the Universe launched. And I was very curious. And when I opened it up and saw things like Snake Mountain and these later figures like Fisto and Jitsu, I was like, well, that really just doesn't add up. That seems really early to have these solicited, uh, but it wasn't until after I got it home that I realized it's the 84 catalog and that somebody at some point had taped the 82 cover to it, probably by mistake. I'm willing to bet that the dealer didn't even notice it. It's totally fine. I'm still happy that I got these um, because to me, like this is, this is like a way of cataloging a, a very specific piece of toy history, right? We all poured through these as kids. I love seeing these solicitations for all these old toy lines that I love and all the weird merchandise that goes with them. And I'm definitely gonna be doing something with these books in a later video, I've got to. And I may not have got that big bin of tick figures, but I did get this creepy Santa. Vintage Santa blow mold. I love this. I think it's awesome. And I was really happy to pick this up uh, from that first table that was there on the show floor to add to our Christmas display. Look, this was a really amazing show. I loved it. But I'm curious, you guys think I made a mistake? Do you think I messed up passing on that? Or do you think I did the right thing by not buying it just for the sake of buying it? This is always one of those debates I even have with myself all the time. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. Sound off in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Special shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the continued support. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out. New episode every single Saturday. Until next time, my friends, happy hunting.